Yes, we saw the Titan. So Siemens introduced a robot which was conversing with you and talking to you. And the question really was, uh, he was about predicting the future. Now, the issue about, uh, and ab about predicting the future is that a couple of things are not changing. So the first thing, if you go back to 2023, we're combining the real and the digital world. What is all the boost is just about combining the real and the digital world. And last year, we basically talked to you about how do we take this into the industrial metaverse. This was the main message of the Hannover Messe, this was the main message of CES. And we talked a bit about AI, about the potential of AI. We had something which we were going forward with. We put it in a little press release and this thing, boom, was super big. Now I come back and want to talk to you about what did we actually do, and I'm going to focus today less about digital and real, less about the industrial metaverse, but really on AI. So the reality is, not AI, but Gen AI has accelerated the digital transformation faster, right? It's a huge shift, right? You can change the way you communicate with machines. It's actually a game changer. And I always said, for me, the changers were mobile phones or the internet. For my kids, it was the smartphone or the cloud. We're now going into a new generation AI. We will have a generation which will come up, which will be born with those capabilities. And we're proud of what we can do, right? We can, uh, if you look at how you interact between the human and the machine, you can actually have, uh, in the past, experts generating very complex code themselves on the PLC to the new future where you talk to the machine and the machine comes back to you and says, okay, this is what you want, I'm going to generate the code and I'm going to generate the handbook and all the capabilities in multiple languages. You can optimize the code, you can debug the code, you can actually do a couple of things. The amazing thing about Gen AI, and this is what we need to understand, is the speed of which this thing is evolving, especially the transformer model, is just amazing. So, let's go back. Um, any geeks here, do you know what this is? Right? It's a babble fish, right? It's if you read the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, you would put the fish in your ear and it would translate it simultaneously. So you could speak all the languages in, in, in the universe. Right? This was science fiction. But the reality is, even if it's science fiction, reality is arriving now. If you look at the programming languages, even if you look at different languages, you see that we can translate instantaneously. So AI is incredibly, incredibly powerful, especially Gen AI is incredibly powerful, and it will transform our industry. The same way digitalization or automation has transformed all of Hannover Messe, Gen AI will transform all of the industry we're in. Why? We have an aging population, that's important. We have less and less people which actually we have in the work force. 2022 was the first time more people exited in the G7, the workforce, than entered. Two, we're becoming more and more globalized, right? I mean, a lot of supply chains are re arranging, and we need to address the climate change issue. So we need to move at much faster speed, and that's where Gen AI can actually go. So it's a supercharger going for Now, a lot of you are journalists, and you're going to be asking me, so what's the difference? So what's the difference between Gen AI, which we see in all of those capabilities, and industrial AI, open AI, Mistral, all of those models, they are amazing. But we're focusing on one part, and this is what the whole boost is about, is AI or Gen AI needs to be different in the industrial space, because we need to be 100% secure. We cannot allow any hallucination. The reality is, when you go and build a power plant or a chemical plant or you develop a new drug, you need to understand how you came to this conclusion. So Gen AI for industry is all about making AI predictable and secure. So what does it mean? So this is where Siemens, this is where we come in. We make AI real, we make AI industrial, we actually make industrial AI easy. I'm going to show you another picture. So this is a picture, can I go to the next slide? This is a picture we had, because 
if you think about AI, there's nothing new about AI. My kids are studying it. They're saying, look, I mean, lots, lots of the models were invented 30, 40 years ago. And we took 30 years to make AI robust, reliable, transparent. This is back in 1974, so a year after I was born. There's a central research department at Siemens which had the task develop these an interactive, automatic, natural language question and answer system. So in some ways this was ChatGPT's grandmother. So Siemens has been working on this, because this was Siemens next door, for a lot of years. So we in Siemens are putting a lot of effort on these AI things. So just to give you a couple of stats, we have 1,500 AI experts at Siemens. This is a study from, uh, from actually a UK-based uh, headhunter, which basically said Siemens is the number one place where AI researchers want to go to go industrial. We have more than 2,800 patents. We have a lot of knowledge in this area. And we just awarded uh, the inventors of the day for 2023 was an AI, this was Wu Shang Liu, and she researched how machine learning processes can communicate while they arrive at their decision. What does it mean? When you go into an AI and you come out of an AI, it's a black box. How do you make that transparent? So, Siemens is a tech company which is deeply rooted in understanding AI in the industrial context, not in the complex context, but in the industrial context. We understand the guardrails. How does it need to be secured? We understand how do we make it useful in the industrial world. And we want to accelerate it faster and faster and faster. So what does it bring? We probably have three times as much patents as our competitors in the industrial space. And the idea is how do you take the patents and you go from the theory of the patents into the practice to scale. So we have the theory, 30 years of AI development, ML models, neural language models. We then went into practice, we announced AI last year, and now we're gonna push out products. So what I'm gonna to talk to you today on this uh, press conference is, is how do we make AI orderable? How can we use it? You remember that last year we had a very cool demo at the 2023 Hannover Messe. This is where we came from, Scheffler, the Scheffler machine. You can see this, this was the first idea on how we can actually make this happen. So if you look at the Scheffler machine, I'll give you, can I go a step back? I'll give you a little story. So I have a family, I'm half French, I have a, we have a family house in uh, France, and my boiler broke down, our boiler broke down. It said error code 50, didn't work. It was, it's Brittany, so it was cold. So I called the engineer, they, they sent an engineer, they come in and they basically said, look, the problem is I only have a German handbook, it's a German boiler. So uh, I'm French, I cannot, can you translate this for me? So I was going through the handbook and I was looking at what it needs to, to do. We saw 50, it, it needed to change the sprayer, it needed to sort of order the parts, etc. Why am I telling you this story? The same happens with all of the machines you see here. You need people which go to the machine, they have huge handbooks, but what if the machine could say, look, I have this issue, this part is missing, please order it, if it orders, please put it in, tune me to this level, and you basically get much, much more interactive in this capabilities. And this is what we've done with the Scheffler machine. The Scheffler machine can be automatically programmed, but it can also ultimately be debugged compared to multiple other machines going forward. So it, it creates a huge amount of value, especially as less people are experts to go into this environment. This is what the industrial environment goes for. So let me give you an example on um, what it can do. So, we had our chancellor, and I'm not saying even our chancellor can now program a robot. I said, like, everyone can actually program a robot. You can have somebody, programming a robot was complicated, especially when it has tasks that they know. But you can now interact and reprogram automatically robots just using language. And that's extremely powerful. So this means that all of you in this room can actually become programmers. At least automation programmers going forward. So that's why we're here, is to enable and to make AI accessible for everyone in the industrial space. So let me give you an example. So today, I'm happy to announce that we're launching the industrial co-pilot, which is seamlessly connected into the TIA model. This first one. We will have it actually downloadable on the Siemens marketplace in the summer. And the main question is, how complicated is it? Do we need a couple of engineers? Do I need a system integrator to put the AI into practice? And I'm going to show you that you can do this in five steps. 
So the first step, you go to Google and you say, okay, um, Siemens Accelerator Marketplace. You go to the Siemens Accelerator Marketplace, and what you see is one option is the industrial co-pilot. You click on it, you basically say, look, I want to buy it. I want to buy the industrial co-pilot. It's for free, it's a freemium at the moment, so we want to have small and medium enterprises adapted. And you download it. So it's now, as an extension of the TIA portal, which is our programming language, you can now use it for very important things. To, for example, most of the industry has these HMI panels. I, I, I hope that Roland Metz, Metzler, not Roland, but Roland Metzler, which develops this HMI panel, it's quite difficult to actually do this. You can now use the industrial co saying, I want this to look like this. Please, can you add three buttons? These buttons should be linked to this. So you don't have to program it in the hard code. You actually can actually say, please change the title to this. Please change the color to that. You get a very different speed of reprogramming the HMI panels, which are these panels which are there. We have a Southern Bears-based automotive company, which is super excited about it because it takes a lot of engineering time. So what happens? We plug in the AI co-pilot into our engineering environment so you can do a lot of the tasks easier. Now, we don't want to do this only for Scheffler or for SMBs. I actually have a video of uh, a customer I interviewed um, to be able to ask him, so what would you do with AI and the co-pilot going forward? So let, I think I have a video with Jens about exactly uh, Steve now. Hey, Steve, it's great to see you. Um, I'm so sorry you can't be with us here today, but I'm super excited about the conversation. Thank you very much, Cedric. The only reason why I cannot be with you as a customer, and I think you understand, but I really like to be with you as well, but that's the only excuse that can be justified. Fully accepted as an excuse. Can you tell the audience what Grenzebach actually does? Yes. Grenzebach is a family business um, out of uh, Germany um, with a large production footprint globally, six production sites. Uh, it's been a family business for more than 60 years, predominantly in four major business units around glass, around building material, around interlogistics and special technologies. We consider and position ourselves as a industry automation solution provider. So I think this is how you can look at Gensebach all together, not only from a business perspective, but also we group around 30 to 35 key global customers in these specific business areas. We position ourselves as a journey partner on their transformation agenda, and that really implies and that really demands that we actually get to see what they see, and we also passionately believe in the power of partnerships. So for this, we know we are, we are not a big company, but definitely we're a global leader in some areas, but for this, we need to believe and want to believe also in the power of partnership, and for this, the power of partnership with Siemens is of vital importance. What are we seeing today, Cedric? I think uh, it's key to see that there's a high demand for automation globally. Uh, there's a high demand uh, for a, and a strong case, a business case for decarbonization. There's a business case for energy efficiency. And to make the case also for AI and for the partnership with Siemens and generative AI is really that we need to apply latest technology because of the sheer abundance of data that's sort of out there and to make productive use of them. Absolutely. I mean, I like the journey partner. I like you for not being a not-so-hidden champion. And I like the fact that you want to use industrial, the industrial coal pipe. Can you tell us what's so exciting about it? Yes. Based on what I just said about the abundance of data and to really to move in turn key, long-term, etc., and having all the predictive uh, maintenance parts, keeping uh, sites sort of in efficiency, in play, in check, in time, cost quality, really requires an understanding that generative AI is no longer a nice to have. So we really want to be an early adopter of the Siemens Industrial Co-Pilot for the TR portal, and that is key to us. And it's also amazing to see and to experience uh, how easy it is. So we don't need 20, 30 engineers sort of to work on this, but it's really important that we can easily integrate it in our systems because we really see what's really happening sort of on site. And we also can feed this back to Siemens. And I think that goes for a partnership. It's always a two-way street. You know, certain things work, and so I think it's beneficial for you as well to see what we experience on our side as well. So it's really easy to use. A couple of clicks, download it on the Siemens Accelerator Marketplace. 
uh, and it's really in the true sense of the word. It's a game changer for us, but it also, back to the original part, and please excuse my entrepreneurial paranoia on this, it's not a nice to have, it's really a must work, and it really, really has to work, that's why we're committed to this. No, absolutely, and I like the fact that from the idea to actually putting it to action, Renzaba is one of the first ones to do it, I'm so happy to be uh, your partner and do this jointly. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, the very best, and the very best to Hanover, and a lot of optimism to Hanover, because a lot of people are looking at you in Hanover, and they expect an optimistic, a justified optimism outlook. So in this case, the very best to you. Thank you, Cedric. Thank you so much, and a perfect closing.